we'll see k-mean clustering for a single data set in data warehouse and mining. K-mean clustering is an exploratory data analysis technique. It implements non-hierarchical method of grouping objects together, determines the centroid using the Euclidean method for distance calculation, and groups the objects based on minimum distance. Now, these are the six simple steps which needs to be followed. Assume the two mean points for a given cluster. I'm saying two mean points if for a single data set we need to create two clusters. The answer is asked for two clusters. If the answer is asked create three clusters, then we have to assume three mean points. Using the Euclidean distance formula, calculate the distance. Now, distance for the Euclidean distance is usually calculated between the two points, that is, x p and p2 if we take x and y is a coordinate for point p1 and a b is for point p2 and the formula is square root of x minus a square plus x minus b square but in our case it's a single data set so here the x will be the value of my item set and a will be the value of my mean which i am considering assuming to start with in step a so the formula and the equation becomes square root of x minus a square. Tabulate the data with reference to the clusters that is by finding the minimum value and we display those clusters and then recalculate the mean for the new cluster and repeat the steps 2 to 4. Similar repetitive clusters are formed when we see there is no movement of item sets between the clusters we say these are the final clusters. Let's start with apply the k-mean clustering for the following data sets for two clusters. The data set given is 2, 4, 10, 12, 3, 20, 30, 11 and 25. Here you will see it has been specified that we have to form two clusters. So as it is given we have to form two clusters. We will assume two means. Let's start with it. Assume the two main points for a given cluster. Let us assume that M1 is equal to 4 and M2 is equal to 11. These are the two means and using the Euclidean distance formula we calculate the distance. I have assumed these two means. You can consider any other two means and solve the problem in the similar way. Data set is given to us. Let's see how we start with it. We calculate the distance for the data set. I have specified this is my formula. This is my item set and these are my means. D1 is the distance from first mean. D2 is the distance from the second mean. So D1 of the first item set 2 is 2 minus 4 square which will be 2 to the squ 2 square it will be 4 and square root of 4 is 2. And X minus A square and the square root of that 2 minus 11 is 9. 9, of, 9 square is 81 and square root of 81 is 9. You will see from both these calculations that whatever values are there when we do item set minus the mean value if you take a mod of it the answer comes the same because we're doing square and then the square root of it. So this is for the first item set that I've found out the value. In the similar way all the item set values will be formed and calculated and the item set table or the distance matrix table is calculated over here. One for example I'll just show you that it is 4 so D1 is calculated as this is the item set 2, 2 minus 4 is 2 so it is 2 over here as I said that x minus a square and square root of it so they both actually get cancelled among themselves but as we are squaring so the negative part of the value gets negated so 4 4 minus 4 is 0 so it is over here 4 minus 10 I get a value of 6 so if you say 6 square is 36 and the square root of it is 6 so this is 6 4 again 4 with 12 I get the value 8 4 3 I get the value 1 4 with 20 I get a value 16 4 with 30 I get a value 26 4 with 11 I get a value 7 and 4 with 25 we get a value 21 so the first distance matrix value for the first mean we have got it over here similarly we calculated the distance for the second mean for this item set so 2 minus 11 9 4 11 7 10 and this mean 11 so it is 1 12 with 11 is again 1 3 with 11 is 8 
11 with 20 is 9, 11 with 30 is 19, 11 with 11 is 0 and 11 with 25 is 14. This is how the distance matrix is calculated. Now let's see how do we form the clusters. The clusters are formed between the two distance matrix for the single item set we will see whichever is the minimum value. Here the minimum values are highlighted if you will see. So the highlighted values if the minimum value is from distance D1 then it belongs to cluster C1. If the minimum value is from the distance D2 then it belongs to cluster C2 as we have to work only on two clusters. We will see further if we need three clusters how the formula works out to be. So here you will see we have calculated which all item set values belong to which cluster and this is how I have shown it over here. Yellow signifies cluster 1 and C blue signifies C2 that is the cluster T C2. So you will see 2, 4 and 3 belong to cluster C1 and 10, 12, 20, 30, 11 and 25 belong to cluster C2. Now as we've got the cluster values C1 and C2 we need to find the mean again. So step 4 display the clusters, recalculate the mean for the new clusters. So the clusters are 2, 4 and 3 so 2 plus 4 plus 3 divided by 3 I get the mean as 13 and the second mean is calculated from the second cluster it is 10 plus 12, 20 plus 30 plus 11 plus 25 divided by 6 I get the second mean value as 18. So we've got M1 as 3 and M2 as 18. So we recalculate the distance value with this new mean value. Similarly, we'll be using, so just an example, 3, 2 minus 3, 1. So it is over here. So with M1 value, calculate D1 and with M2 value, calculate D2. As I calculate both and my distance matrix is complete, let's see, it belongs to which cluster. Similarly, for D1 and D2, for a single item set value we find the minimum. Minimum is highlighted with green and now you will see how it is clustered. Now we see that an item set 10 which was belonging to cluster C2 has now moved to cluster C1. So as there is a movement of an item set between the cluster so this cannot be my final cluster. So we start recalculating the mean again with these item set values of cluster C1 as 2, 4, 3 and 10 and C2 as 12, 20, 30, 11 and 25. So my new cluster is here and my mean is calculated as 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 10 divided by 4 I get 4.75, 12 plus 20 plus 30 plus 11 plus 25 divided by 5 I get 19.6. These are my new mean values. So here with these new mean values I start calculating my difference using the same formula in the similar way. So this is my distance matrix with these two mean values and these highlighted portions show me that my cluster movement has happened. My item sets have moved from cluster C2 to C1 and my clusters are C1 has 2, 4, 3, 10, 12, 11 and my 12 and 11 which were belonging to my cluster C2 with these mean values have moved to cluster C1. So there is a movement so I can't stop over here. We have to recalculate our mean values. So with this new cluster formations we calculate our mean value and the mean value is for the cluster C1 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 divided by 6 I get 7 and the second mean value for the second cluster 20 plus 30 plus 25 by 3 I get 25. So let's start calculating the distance matrix again. Now with these new manu values, mean values, my distance matrix looks like this and you will see again that the minimum portions are highlighted and there is no movement of the item sets in the cluster. They remain same. 2, 4, 3, 10, 12 and 11 still the same as they were with the previous mean and 20, 30, 25 also is the same that they were with the previous mean. So we can say that the final clusters, the two clusters that we needed are C1 with 2, 4, 3, 10, 12 and 11 and C2 as 20, 30 and 25. Now this is how a single item set with two mean values or two 
clusters is done. Now the next example that I will see is apply the k-mean clustering for the following data set for three clusters. That means I need to form three clusters for this given data set. Let's see how do we do. Assume the three mean points for a given cluster. Let us assume m1 is equal to 2, m2 is equal to 10 and m3 is equal to 17. The cluster values have to be present in your data set. So out of this data set I have considered these three values as 2, 10 and 17. We follow the same distance formula so x will be my item set value, a will be the value of my mean. Let's start calculating in the similar fashion. d1 of 1 is 1, d2 of 1 is 19 and d3 of 1 is 16. Here the mean value which is considered is 2 over here. This is m1, this is m2 if you will see it is 10 and this is m3 which is 17. So we have calculated the first value. Similar fashion you need to calculate all the three distance value. d1 is calculated with mean m1 just remember d2 is calculated with mean m2 with the value 10 that is 10 minus 1, 1 minus 10 will give you 9, 2 minus 10 will give you 8, 6 minus 10, 4, 7 minus 10, 3, 8 minus 10, 2. It is minus 2 but square and the square root will give me a positive answer, 10 minus 10 is 0, 15 minus 10 is 5, 17 minus 10 is 7, 20 minus 10 is 20. D3 is calculated with a mean 17. So 1 minus 17 is 16 square and square root will give me a positive answer. So on and so forth is this calculated. Now here again D1, D2, D3 the distance value for this item set whichever is the minimum value. Minimum values are highlighted over here. Here because we need three clusters so I'm sorry this is C1 by mistakenly I have written C1, C3 it is this belongs to C1, C1, C1 this is C2, C2, C2 and this is C3, C3, C3 so I've got three clusters over here there's a correction I'm sorry so C1 has 1, 2 and 6 C2 has 7, 8 and 10 C3 has 15, 17 and 20 you will see over here that these two have the minimum values. I am considering it in D1 and let's see if I consider it in D2 what will happen but here at present I am considering 6 in the cluster D1, C1 and doing the calculation. So C1 is 1, 2, 6, C2 is 7, 8 and 10, C3 is 15, 17 and 20. So means are recalculated 1 plus 2 plus 6 divided by 3 is 3, 7 plus 8 plus 10 divided by 3 is 8.33, 15 plus 17 plus 20 divided by 3 is 17.33. 3. Let's calculate the distance. The distances are calculated. Again for D1 we'll consider 3, for D2 we'll consider 8.33 and for D3 we'll consider 17.33 and we get a cluster formation. Minimum values are again highlighted and you will see this is how my cluster is formed. C1, 2 C1 values, 4 C2 values and 3 C3 values and my cluster is this. You see there is a movement which has happened. 6 which was belonging to cluster C1 has now moved to cluster C2. As there is a movement so we have to recalculate the mean. I recalculate the mean. My mean is 1.5, 7.75 and 17.33 and this is D1 with 1.5 D2 with 7.75 and D3 with 17.33 the new means and the new distance matrix is created the clusters remain the same there is no moment of item set between the clusters so we can say this is the final value of my clusters so I've got my three clusters C1 is equal to 1,2 C2 is equal to 6, 7, 8 and 10 C3 is equal to 15, 17 and 20 just if we had considered this C1 which was coming common between C1 and C2 the value 6 if we would have considered this in the cluster C2 in the first case we would have got the answer in the second step but since we had considered 6 in the cluster C1 we had taken extra step 
So this is how we have got three clusters using the Euclidean distance method for k-mean clustering. Thank you.